Hey, Marie, I just saw him back again with women in the battle. The Solomites women. Shulamite women. Her character. Hers is the only female voice that speaks directly to us in the scripture. Ruth and Esther voices, for instance, are meditated by narrators. The Shalomite woman boldly declares her longing and desires to be united to her lover and merge. Her sorrow to have been separated from her beloved at times. Her joy to enjoy so passionate a love. Her story, she was young, beautiful, and desirable. He was handsome, strong, and able. A shepherd or a king who lavished strange phrases upon his beloved. He compared her head to a flock of goats running down a mountain slope, her nose to the tower of Labana, and her teeth to sheep that just bathed. We smile in amusement at such images, understanding, however, that the Shonamite women would have found them flattering, but we are more fascinated than amused by this beautifully written collection of love songs. And though we know it's, it's, it is not merely some anxious Valentine's Day card, we are, not, we are not quite certain what to make of it. Unlike any other book in the Bible, the Song of the Songs is full of erotic imaginary. The Charlemagne woman who was, was a passionate at her lover, as her lover, initiating contact with him, openly declaring her feelings. She yearned for kisses from his mouth, so in love that even his name smelled sweet to her. She wandered the city at night or dreamt of wandering it. Searching for him, she wished she could pass him off as her brother so that she could kiss him publicly without creating a scandal. Each declaration from her elicited a passionate response from her lover who sang of her. Despite the angel's imaginary, we get the message. The story of the, Sh of the Shalomite women and her lover isn't properly a story, one with clear narrative line, but a poetic expression of love and all its emotional variety and intensity. The song captures the desire, the anguish, the tension, and the ecstasy of love. Speaking and singing shifts so quickly, however, that it can be difficult to tell who is speaking and what is going on. No wonder what there has been so many difficult interpretations inter inter interpretations of the songs of songs more than any other book of the old testament what makes this portion of scripture even more passion is that it never once mentions god but if god had nothing to do with these love songs how did this how did this material material ever make it into the canon of scripture in the first place the Jews believe the book was not primary about individual love, but about God's love for his people, Israel. Christian initiate read it as a parable of God, of Christ's love for the church, and later as a parable of his love for the individual soul. Moderate commentators tend to view it more literally as an expression of the sacredness of married life, the fullest expression of love between a man and a woman. They praise it in conclusion in the Bible because it celebrates mutual love and a sexual expression of that love. Anyone inclined to believe the Bible teaches a negative view of sex should read this book of scripture before drawing such a conclusion. But who wrote those love songs? Some say various poets, while others say they were written by Solomon in praise of one of his many wives. And yet others have suggested they were written by a woman. Whatever the case, most admit that the poetry of the Songs of Songs can be understood in more than one way. The story of the Shalomite, mysterious as it is, touches our longing to love and be loved. And I'll be back with Woman of the Bible.